<laughs> and I'm Andrew Wetmore. I'm the director of student activities here. And uh, this is our first in-studio uh, podcast that we're doing. We started this last year. Uh, it was uh, through Microsoft Teams, but that's not quite as fun. So we have a cool, fun setup here, and uh, we're welcoming uh, everyone here on campus. Uh, speaking of being back on campus, that's kind of part of our topic today. Um, most of you, um, well, you're, Charlie, you, you have been here for um, a couple of years, pre, at least pre-pandemic, but the rest of you, um, you know, you're student leaders now, but last year, um, you know, no one was allowed on campus. What was that like? I know, Kaylee, um, you're, you know, you were a student senator last year, but you had never even stepped foot on the campus. What was that like coming back in here, being president? Um, and being you know, almost completely new to the school. Well, I, um, after high school, I didn't go right into college. Being 30 years old, I think that um, starting school online was actually beneficial because it, like, I was able to um, be adjusted to work, school, and, like, the assignments and stuff like that. And, um, be, being able to have time doing that and then for like I think it was two semesters before mm -hmm. we came back mm -hmm. two semesters before we came back it gave me time to figure out um, my life basically and now that I'm on campus um, it's working out for me cool. Jackie? so I graduated high school in the pandemic and then transition to college so for me that was a pretty interesting experience because I had just always been in traditional school and I just always thought I was gonna go to college and go to campus but being online actually wound up working out pretty well for me I would say I adjusted pretty well to it and was able to get most of my work done at the same rate that I do now and I don't feel that a lot has changed but I think that what has changed is that I've definitely been able to make more connections and friendships on campus and get to actually know my professors and know the people that I'm working with on a day-to-day -day basis, whereas before I really didn't have that opportunity. Mm. Now, did, <clears throat> did you and Eric, you guys go to school together, high school together? No, right? we, no. we didn't. No, separately? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, but you were both you were remote for your senior year of high school? Yeah, the end part. Yeah. Sort of. It was sort in the of. works, mm -hmm. so we didn't really have anything going on because they were still trying to figure everything out. But, but you missed out a bit, probably, on uh, did you have like a senior prom or all those no. fun no. things you get to do? No. We had nothing like that. Canceled. That's that's <clears throat> yeah, that's tough. Did you did you think you missed out on part of that experience? A little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm. I was fine without it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep. And Charlotte, um, you know, having been a student here and then we were kind of forced home, what was that like for you? Um, it ended up being fine at first, like for the first seven, eight months, but then um, it just ended up being rough and I wanted to get, out, get my ass out of the house, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, but then I um, it ended up being fine because I was able to get, like, although it was fine because I was able to get a, a relatively decent routine with class and clubs and all that it, it was i just wanted to get out of the house and well, i think we all went a little bit stir crazy um when you look at uh you know it was very two weeks to to curve you know to stop the spread right two weeks that was it yeah we'll be back you know for us we left uh, right around march 20th here on campus yeah. Yeah. and um it was like yeah we'll be back in in april no. 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 A, a year and a half later, <clears throat> a year and a half later, now we're back on campus and I'm able to actually socialize with people and share opinions and not be as much of an introverted pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think a lot of us got really comfortable because we were out for so long. Uh, at first it was very weird, but then that just kind of became normal life as well. You just, you worked from home, you went from school from, from home and and that was it. And then now we're slowly creeping back. As a students, what you know has it been a a good transfer back? Are you happy to be back on campus? And um, you know, or do you want to stay at home in your pajamas? I like being back. I really do. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I really like <coughs> being back. I, I just feel like it's better to get to know the people that you're working with, kind of like I said before, and it's a lot more engaging. I just feel like I'm actually learning a lot more and 
it's just a better experience overall. And also, we get to watch movies and like, go to fairs together, and there's yeah. a dance tonight, so looking forward right. to spending time with people. Yeah. yeah. There's like, things to get you out of the house. And yeah. yeah. I like, appreciate uh, it more. I, I, I didn't like online school. It wasn't engaging, and uh, I went from Wolka Tech to college, which the academic divide there is pretty significant. <laughs> So I went from basically no acad academics to academics and like a lot of it, uh, for me at least. And if I were on campus, that would have been a lot easier of an adjustment. Mm -hmm. And then being on campus now, it's like, I'm, I only have one class on campus, but I'm actually learning statistics. Mm -hmm. I good. probably wouldn't be if I wasn't on now, campus. Now, can you talk about that difference between academics? Now, I think um, some people would probably attribute that to a technical high school maybe it's not as focused on you know traditional academics like right. your, your gen eds here but do you think part of it is because it was online um that you know some of the teachers made it almost easier um and took that into account how difficult things were in general but did that help or hurt you for uh in, in high school in high school once the pandemic hit i honestly didn't do really too much work at all <laughs> Um, cause for senior year, I, I had senioritis pretty bad. So I worked out the math of like, all right, if I get good grades, these three quarters, I can kind of coast by the last one. And the last one we had COVID. So I hung out at home and played video games. It's like, this is pretty good. And I did a few assignments here and there. So it was even more significant than if I just stayed at tech in school uh, coming from that to maybe online school, it would have been easier. But since we had the pandemic, it probably even made that harder too, because I got adjusted with little to no work. Yeah, I have no judgment on the senioritis. I had three lunch periods my senior year, so um, there's no no judgment here. Um, Jackie, what do you think um, has been the most or was the most difficult part of remote? learning and um why do you think do you think it will ever go back to more you know being online opposed to uh, everyone being you know the luxury of being online or do you want people on campus what do you think is going to happen um so for the first part i think that the most difficult part about being online was definitely student engagement a lot of people i know are anxious and they don't want to talk to people they've never even met in their lives over a camera and I know that was a big thing. In a lot of my online classes, there was little to no participation, and it was just the professor kind of rambling on for however long the class was. They tend to do that. Yep. That's okay. And you're definitely not getting that full experience, too, because when you're at home, there's a lot of distractions. It's not like you're forced to pay attention in a classroom. You know, if you're sitting there with your, your camera off and your mic off, you can be on your phone. You can be doing other things. So it's just like you're not getting that full experience of the class. Um, I think that overall, I think online classes are a good thing and that, you know, the school should probably continue to offer them. But I do prefer in person learning. And I think that for a lot of people, it works well, it works better, but everybody's different. Some people prefer online. And Kaylee, um, I think you had mentioned that you're a non traditional student. Uh, a little bit older, do you think that there is a big difference between those who maybe are in their, their late 20s and 30s and 40s taking classes and whether or not they would prefer them to be online opposed to maybe high school students that are, are you know, just graduated or graduated during the pandemic that were completely online um, that would just probably prefer just to keep it that way? And Well, I did have some time taking classes online, but... Even as a 30-year-old, I would probably prefer to be in class, but I didn't take any um, in-class in classes in class classes this semester because of um, the vaccination and COVID and stuff like that. I wanted to stay safe, so so yeah, I would probably pr prefer in in person, and I think a lot of people could relate to that, no matter what your age is. Mm -hmm. And you know. Being in a community college, I think a lot of people, there's a 
misunderstanding about what campus life is like, um, and then you don't get a necessarily a traditional college experience, which I don't believe is true. Um, I think a lot of that was lost when we were off campus and we were kind of shooting from the hip. Um, from a student activities perspective, it was very difficult because it was flipping our entire role on its head. It was trying to get students to come together in one place, engage with each other, meet people, um, and you know help develop those sort of soft skills through many different things. And now it was, okay, no, do the complete opposite. Everyone as far away <laughs> as possible um, and uh, sit in front of a screen. Uh, do you think now that there is, um, you know, we've been at this uh, way past two weeks or you know, almost coming up, we had two years probably, and you know, that's a long time. Do you think that... Um, you know, it's uh, it's been an issue for students that they've really missed out on a lot of those um, experiences that they would have benefited from. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's like I during the time off campus, I didn't talk to anyone new at the school. I didn't work. There was no like cooperation in class or I wasn't working with anyone. And being on campus, I'm talking to more people than I would have. Like everyone here except Jackie, I <laughs> met because we're on campus. That's true. Yeah. 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 That's why I do appreciate the Senate meetings because we yeah. all come together every week for an hour. I appreciate that. Yeah, we yeah. love it. Yeah. I know, I know um, they saw them doing multiple, like three, at least three to four clubs to, within the past year alone. Um, when we were doing things virtually that that um I know I would get I know I would talk a little bit to some people like or in the, in the past couple of classes that I was classes that I was taking but otherwise I would be the, the only real socialization that I had especially since I'm on since I'm one of the few that's disabled here and that's on senate um but the only real socialization that I had was with any with anyone that's on the clubs and so it's just like okay i guess this is the only socialization that i get for the most part and that's what i have to deal with so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah well I, you know i can hear the you know the frustration do you think that there is um definitely screen fatigue um people are sick of sitting in front of a screen and you know as students even though you know most of you are younger you kind of grew up with that more so than my generation did um although we were kind of one of the first that you know ended up there but uh, you know, you guys had screens really your entire lives for the most part in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But is at what point is it is it too much? You know, for even for people who live on their phones, is it too much to be trying to do everything online? I would definitely say it is too much to be doing everything online. I mean, once you get to a certain point of just having all of your classes online and then you're always on your phone, it just gets exhausting because you're not getting that face-to-face -face interaction with people that you normally would get. And you eventually kind of start to miss that, I think, and you just want to see people and be out again. And because of that, I know that like some people kind of got anxiety kind of coming back to like the real world and coming back to school because they just spent so much time alone that they had a hard time going back to being with people again and talking to people they don't know. Yeah, it was it was an adjustment. Um, yeah. I remember the first time someone went to shake my hand um, after all of this, and it was like I, like I almost like I like recoiled. Right. Um, and that was something that was a very natural. Like I shook everyone's hand. That's just what I did. I was a politician. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it, it was bizarre. What are some of those things that you experienced that made you hesitate uh, as we start to come out of this? Um, I am introverted, but I definitely notice like. I have a bit of a harder time participating in class and just doing things that I would normally do in high school without thinking twice about. Now it's like I kind of think more about that and I'm just more anxious about it. And I think it's just because I just spent so much time away from people and I wasn't interacting with people I didn't know. Well, this has been an introvert's dream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, like I know my, my, my wife in particular, she could just sit at home all day, yeah. uh, work from home all day. And like to me, I, I went stir crazy. Yeah. Um, and it just drove me nuts. I mean, I was at home with three toddlers um, day after day after day after day, like uh, without, you know, minimal other human interaction. Sometimes we'd go for a walk and maybe we'd see a neighbor. <laughs> right. um, but it was like, uh, oh, dear God. Uh, and so, I know two of you who were with me on the Senate last year, and I'm sure I was a little 
different than I was now. I think we're all starting to lose our freaking minds. For me, it was the opposite. I was completely alone. Mm -hmm. No kids, no husband, no um, wife, no parent. It was just me. So I actually benefited. I learned a lot about myself. I, I that was, does sound nice, doesn't it? I was with... I, was with, <laughs> I know for me... Um, and as Andrew knows, because he's known me for two freaking years at this point, um, but he, he knows that I still with my live with my family and all that. Yeah. Um, so that, that like so, doing things online on top of doing like on top of doing like the college classes and all that. Just I don't and honestly, I don't even know how I managed to pass both classes that I did. Um, but. Um, that, but doing the classes, living with my family still, and all that just doesn't take away the fact that it can still potentially be overwhelming from time to time. So, yeah. Well, you know, it's yeah, too much time with this one person or the same group of people is not healthy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You start. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, you're either, uh, you know, Tom Hanks and Castaway talking to a volleyball or you're, you know. Just try not to jump off the roof. If you ever notice, whenever I join the group, like I'm very talkative because I'm just like finally. Oh boy, some of the talk. Yeah, you're like a dog yeah. who's been in a crate all day, <laughs> and then the owner comes home and it's like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> 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 that, that reminds me so much of my older <clears throat> brother's dog. Whenever either my dad or my older brother comes home, because because she's like, oh, the men are home. I gotta run and bark and just go crazy, like. You gotta deal with my craziness until you give me attention. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, well, Listen to what I have to say. <laughs> well, yeah, and, Pretty you know, much, yeah. You know, it's it's um, at, at first, I think for the majority of people though, it's been it's been more difficult than positive. Unfortunately, I mean, there's things I'm grateful for. I was able to spend more time with my kids than I ever would have been able to, even if it was probably too much. But you also look at, um, you know. There, there is the question of is this going to lead to a baby boom or a divorce boom yeah. and there has been no baby boom <laughs> and um, uh, and you, you see the you know the levels of depression continuing to go up uh, opiate addiction and problems uh, you know related to you know obviously usually depression and, and other disorders and um, you know have all been on the rise um, have you guys noticed a change in anyone in your lives uh, that's really been you know that really changed quite a bit in this past you know, year and a half. Um, or no, because we were all locked in yeah, together and we weren't checking up on anyone. So. <laughs> um, I like to look at the positive, so you guys can go ahead and focus on... Honestly, yeah. besides, besides not seeing people as much as I used to prior to the pandemic, not to my knowledge, mm -hmm. um, I... Um, I also know that things that I, I know that there, um, I know that, that one of my friends whom I've known for over a decade, I found out that it was that she was being abused by her mom, but besides, and has like a lot of issues because of that, but I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, if it was pandemic related. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I mean, go ahead, Eric. Uh, two of my friends, their moms basically locked them in the house after uh, the pandemic started so you know most of us you know kind of still saw each other every so often uh but those two kind of went stir crazy and you know it was just more depressing for them uh and i they were normally very talkative and outgoing and stuff like that but they kind of just they they got quieter during it a little bit and uh it was just we wanted to see them and hang out with them and they couldn't come out because their parents wouldn't let them and you know the pandemic going on and everything like that so the few times that we did see them like i dropped off a thing of coke at my friend's house and mm -hmm. i saw him wave from his doorstep that's so sad how that old was, is he uh my age oh really how yeah. old are you uh 19. 19. yeah well, yeah, when you hear, um, you know, now, you know, obviously, um, you know, mask mandates, some are being lifted, some are in place, and, uh, you know, there's a continued, you know, controversy over those. But, uh, you know, there is a, you know, a kind of a thought now that a lot of people are looking at is, like, you know, is the cure, at what point is the cure worse than, than the disease? And, you know, the impact that it has on people. And, you know, I think of uh, the elderly specifically, um, you know, 
it's really tough on them because they really locked people down and say, if you're old, you just, you don't leave your house and no one's going to visit you. Yeah. You can wave to grandma through the window like your friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's really, really hard because that tend to not be as, uh, you know, effective with technology like we are. Mm -hmm. um, so they can't connect with people as easily. Right. Um, I know. Yeah. That's, oh, sorry. Um, I know it with, or at least, I, I know my... Um, um, I know with both my, um, I know with both sides of my family, um, my, or at least with my grandparents anyway, I know they would, um, I know that, that, that they would use Zoom and whatnot, like Zoom, FaceTime and whatnot, but I would, but with one side of the family, I wouldn't talk to as, as often as with the other side of the family. So it's just like, um, because we always would see my family at least once, or with yeah. my dad's side of the family once <coughs> once a week and all that. So, right. Um, yeah, that's really hard. Yeah, I know for um, my family, I used to go to Vermont with um, my dad's side of the family every year because my dad's parents live in Arizona, and we weren't able to go because of the pandemic. So, I haven't seen my grandparents in a couple of years, and unfortunately, my grandfather passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry. Ago. And I wasn't able to see him those last two years of his life because, you know, partially because of the pandemic. And then my mom's parents, they stayed in Florida the whole time. And I finally got to see them for the first time in like two years this past summer. So it's definitely been really hard with like older family members. Yeah, yeah and definitely I mean, you feel like you, you've lost out on a lot of time uh, with a lot of individuals. And, yeah. um, you know, I think not only is it, it terrible how many people have passed away but i think of the people who have passed away to non-covid issues right. who um are still waiting to have funeral services yeah you know, these, these people have been long buried or cremated you know it's been uh, obviously tough on those individuals uh, who are you know in in pain in the hospital but i think it's makes it even tougher that in a lot of cases you can't even go and visit yeah um, and you can't be by their side and that's that's you know incredibly difficult on on loved ones who just want to be there for people um but instead of all the bad things, what positives, because, you know, there, there's always two sides of everything. What positives have you seen that have come out of this, either for you or for other people in general? Don't uh, say the stimulus money. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was being able to spend time every day with them. And it was a, a rude awakening for them when I had to go back to work. Uh, and I was like, yeah, you're going to go somewhere else now. And I, I'm kind of over you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's, uh, you know, different. Um, and it was probably tough on a lot of little kids who were happy to be back. But what what was positive things that happened for you whether it was more time to yourself or you know self-discovery or, or trying new hobbies or you know what came out of that for you for me I would say definitely trying new hobbies um, I got really bored during the pandemic so I definitely did like a lot of things that I had always been interested in but just never really found the time to do before mm -hmm. what were those for you um, I really like to like cook and bake and stuff, so I started baking a lot more, and then I started painting too, and that was really fun. I'm not doing that as much now that I'm back in school, but during that time, I definitely did a lot of those things to pass the time. Well, yeah, I think well, there's the terrible stereotype of uh, your freshman year of college, the freshman 15. Yeah. Um, I found the COVID 15 like real fast because really? I was just you know when you don't have anything else to do, sometimes you just eat. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, definitely happened to some people, I know. Yeah, but yeah. other people, um, you know, started exercising more because uh, yeah. they had the time to do it. I wish yeah. I had taken that route. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it was uh, actually relative. So before the pandemic and before high school, I was pretty much a homebody. I spent most of my time behind a screen playing video games, like, online with friends. So after the pandemic hit, uh, it kind of just reverted back to that, where... I think that's called irony, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was... I, it got to the point where I got sick of doing that, but it was just like a nostalgia sort of thing. That's, mm -hmm. I didn't really take up any new hobbies or exercise, but that was kind of the only plus that I could think of. I realized that my mental health was more of a priority than anything, especially after this past semester and all that. So I was like, oh yeah, 
it's okay to take a mental it's okay to take a break off of doing homework and taking and socializing with people that you want to punch in the face <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i think it allowed a lot of people to reset their priorities and and really put a lot of things in perspective for them and uh, you found things that you can live without that you didn't think you could before what have you found um to be something that you know is never going to change back for you is there anything in your life that says no that has changed forever now <laughs> I feel like that'll never end. Anyone else? <laughs> you may not even know yet. Shaking hands. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be an interesting Wait, one. Have you guys sh- shook anyone's hands? Yeah. I I've I I even even when I was at the Jenner Center doing some stuff, I I know I would use the elbow yeah. for some people and be like and be like, here you go. But otherwise, I know and I know in recent months, um, I realized, oh yeah, I can start hugging people that I that I can pretend that I've known pretty much for since I was a child again. If like if of course if they had their vaccination and all that, but um. I, I became a big fan of the fist bump. I didn't care for the elbow. It's very awkward. I, I hated the foot, the foot shake. Foot shake. I don't foot have shake. that sort of balance. Did anyone ever put their hand out for a handshake and then gave you the, their elbow? Like yeah. Vice versa? Yeah, yeah, yes. I, I usually do. I just end up doing like a wave and just say, yeah, I don't know what's socially acceptable these days. Yeah. Um, but I had someone like, do the, uh, like, give me the, like, the handshake and then like the bro hug. You know, oh. with like one hand and then like pull oh. you in. And I was like... I don't know what's happening now. I, I, I feel I, like I, I feel I, like the even even before the pandemic happened, I um, a, a person who graduated <clears> like literally the year I first started going to the Jenner Center, a person would do that, and, and it could be awkward before the pandemic. But now I was kind of like, it, are the police going to show up? Are like, someone going like, to arrest me? I think I'm breaking a law or something, and I, it's, uh, it's strange. I kind of just always went for the handshake, and if I got one in return, I got one. What do you do if you don't? You, just you, you gotta do yeah, the, just you gotta do that the hand. Yeah, I mean, some I mean, some of the mask rule. I, I think you know, there's obviously something behind wearing masks. I think it does stop the spread of germs. That's pretty. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty clear, right? Yeah. Um, but sometimes, I mean, what do you think is the most absurd? I don't. I don't want to call them laws, but rules, if you will, when it comes to to COVID. For me, it's you can you have to have a mask on, uh, except if you're eating. Then you can take <laughs> it off. Because, you know, you don't breathe when you eat, so. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, sorry, you want to go? It's a, go ahead, Jackie. Okay. <laughs> so, for me, I would say it's kind of like what you said. When you're in a restaurant and you have to wear a mask to walk 10 feet to get to your booth, then you take it off when you're eating. You have to go to the bathroom. You have to put it back on to walk 10 feet to the bathroom. Did you ever see that meme where they're like, uh, the school teachers are like, I'm going to make my classroom tables restaurant tables so that the kids don't have to wear their masks. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I have not seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's... I do have a good one. Go ahead. Um, this one was, like, amazing to me. So when I was at Target, they actually put, like, a plastic cover over the credit card machine to prevent the credit card machine from getting COVID. Because I was like, what does that do? I, I have noticed that. The plastic yeah. cover on top of the buttons... And I said, well, well, who are you protecting? The credit card machine? Yeah. And so then you're all just touching the plastic. It just. I yeah, I've noticed that. I know. I know. Whenever I'm going to like, ta- to like Target, Staples, whatever, I'm just like, oh yeah, I know. I know. I I know. Yeah, I noticed that as well. But it's just like, half of me is like, what's the point of this? But it's the other half of me is like, I understand that that, that they're just trying to prevent COVID in a way. Yeah. So. The I would say the supermarket arrows. God, she stole both mine. <laughs> I, I want to point that, that out. Go ahead, Eric. Oh, sorry, she, Eric. Jackie stole both of mine. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely one of the, the weirder. Supermarket arrows. Where's the pants in the relationship? <laughs> <laughs> Guess so. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, yeah. So you no, know, that was definitely one. Did anyone else do what I did? Which is there was something right like a couple feet in. You just did the. I'm going to point the other way and I'm going to back it up. And you just back down the halfway down the aisle to get what you're getting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I did that sometimes. I sometimes really? just ignored yeah. the uh, arrows. Yeah, and oh, the I, well, no one, you know, no one's enforcing it. Oh, one, so it's I, like I got yelled at I once. Got yelled at <laughs> once. Really? Yeah. I just kind of kept walking, see if they followed me. Then I would listen. <laughs> well, I mean, that's and that's what you know. Some of these things, it's like 
what's the, like what's the what's going to happen to you? I mean, right. I mean what, like, I guess they could ask you to leave. Yeah, they could call the police. But at what point is it just kind of like you know? You hope everyone just kind of follows the rules. But I mean, but at what point are they just so absurd that you just scratch your head and go, "Come on now." Can you can yeah. you explain the thought process of the arrows? Is what is that doing? The thought process of the arrows is that so you're not facing each other. So in case someone sneezes, they're not going to sneeze into your face. Hopefully they'll sneeze away from you. Yeah. Or, you know, they'll sneeze into the back mm. of your head. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sneeze on your clothes, get the germs on and you wipe your shirt. And yeah, you yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yep. I mean, at that point we were already wearing masks. So it was kind of like, it was, I mean, oh. you know, I get it. it. You know, people were panicked. Did anyone else do what I did, which is there was something right like a couple feet in. You just did the, I'm going to point the other way and I'm going to back it up. And you just back down the halfway down the aisle to get what you're getting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did that sometimes. I sometimes really? just ignored yeah. the uh, arrows. Yeah, and oh, they screamed. Well, no one, employees. you know, no one's enforcing it. Oh, one, so it's I, like I, got yelled, I, I once. got yelled at <laughs> once. Really? Yeah. I just kind of kept walking, see if they followed me. Then I would listen. <laughs> well, I mean, that's and that's what you know. Some of these things. It's like, what's like? What's the? What's going to happen to you? I mean, right. I mean what, they, I guess they could ask you to leave. Yeah. They could call the police. But at what point is it, it just kind of like, you know, you hope everyone just kind of follows the rules. But I mean, but at what point are they just so absurd that you just scratch your head and go, come on now? Can you, yeah. can you yeah. explain the thought process of the arrows? Is, what is that doing? The thought process of the arrows is that so you're not facing each other. Okay. So in case someone sneezes, they're not going to sneeze into your face. And hopefully they'll sneeze away from you. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, they'll sneeze into the back mm. of your head. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sneeze on your clothes, get the germs on, and you wipe your shirt. And <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yep. I mean, at that point, we were already wearing masks, so it was kind of like, it was, I mean, oh. you know, I get it. it. You know, people were panicked. And yes. All these things had good intentions. They did. Uh, but, like, a lot of laws, like a lot of things, you know, the path to hell is paid with, with good intentions. Mm. And, um, yeah, I think the arrows is probably the one that drove me nuts because I, I, I never go in order. Yeah. And I'm always yeah. back and forth, so it, it just infuriate. Um, but I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna go into this aisle and just get the crap that I need. I don't give a damn about the lines <laughs> or arrow line. Thing. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, the most stupid thing that I've seen grocery stores do is funneling everybody out and in one door. Oh yeah. It's like yeah. Uh, yeah, again, uh, irony. Yeah. Yes. You're just you're you're, you're trying to separate people, yeah. and you're putting them in one door and out one door. And right. they're, like, they're standing in line right next to each other outside of the store. And yeah. Like it allows. Yeah. I, I, well, I, this one's probably the topper, and I can't believe it hasn't come up yet. But it's people in their cars alone, oh, <laughs> wearing masks. That's still getting. I've seen that. A I lot. still see that. Yeah. I I just don't I I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know. Come on now. The Sometimes I wonder if they forget to take it off or that what's too. going that's, on. That's good. That could be it too. Because um, I have forgotten several times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, you kind of get oh just like God. used to it. I yeah. Know. Right. Yeah, and, I, I, yeah. I, I probably have done that before, but I've never noticed other people doing it before. So it's just like, yeah. what? You have to be observant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I typically would be, but it's just like, I sometimes, so the awareness is just like, it's like, okay. I'm not even gonna pay attention to you people that I go away. <laughs> yeah. But with, with someone else. We go ahead. Uh, with the like, yeah, with the people just driving alone, it's like their car next to them, maybe. <laughs> kind of sneeze yeah. and go through your vents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I get it. You, you know, people. You, fear does a lot of weird things to people. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know, this was a scary thing. Um, you know, for most people. And, um, you know, I think everyone was impacted by it. I'm sure at least everyone I know at least knows one person who contracted it. Um, yeah. You know, I've known, I you know, knew several people who have passed away from it. Wow. Um, and, you know, that's scary. I've seen, you know, I seen, saw a lot of people get hospitalized with it, which are, are slowly getting better now, but have long impacts from it. So, yeah, I, I know, I actually know a couple of people who c- contracted it and have, and I guess one of the symptoms of of like post COVID is like fatigue and all that. And I get, mm-hmm. and I guess because they both one works at Stop and Shop, and I don't exactly remember where, remember where the other person works, but I guess they both get fatigue, and they both just pa- go and they both just pass out and just like okay. Hmm. Kaylee, go ahead. Yeah, I was thinking that um, fear 
like people experienced fear for the past couple of years so it, it, I think a lot of people have learned from that they now they know how to handle fear in their like life now you know well they, not, it, not overreact I think this will make a lot of people more um, resilient in general. Um, you know, you look at how many people have lost their jobs, yep. um, but are still figuring it out, um, or at least doing the best they can to figure it out. So it'll be, what do you think is, uh, as we wrap up here, what's what's the future of this? Where do we go here, October 2021? Uh, numbers, at least in the state of Connecticut, are looking good. Um, there are some states who are very strict with their COVID rules that have high cases. And then now you have places like Florida who have no rules, which actually have record lows with COVID numbers. Uh, wh where are we going from here? What's the end game? What do you think is the final, like, okay, enough's enough. Well, and when do you think it's going to happen? I think that sooner than later, things are going to get better. You know, life is going to go back to the way it was and we're not going to be seeing as many masks, but I don't really know exactly how long that's going to be. I think kind of like you said, it's going to vary on state to state because where you live, you know, plays a huge role in how you kind of view the pandemic. I know that there's a lot of different opinions on it in different areas of the country. And I think that certain states you're going to see, they're still going to be really strict about it. And they're going to be like, wear your mask. And other states are going to become more lenient and kind of give up on it. And then eventually, those stricter states are going to become more lenient, and then. So you, you think eventually it's it's, it's going to just fade away. Yeah. With anything, time change. Yep. Because I, well, yeah. because I mean, if you're like if you're a governor, okay, uh, say, say you're governor of Lamont right here in Connecticut. Yeah. At what point do you say, okay, we're good, right. and do you rip that bandit off? Because not only politically, but you know morally, uh, in some ways, you want to look at it. You know, there's a flare up after you do that, and people die. Right. That's you know that's tough to be on someone's conscience. Right. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's uh it, that's a tough one. So again, how how does it happen? Uh, that's something that I, I've asked since day one. I said, okay, well, what's the end game where we're all gonna say, you know, we stop the standoff and just say, uh, all right, we're all gonna do this together. I feel like and go. Yeah. Yep. I feel like I, it's a standoff. It is a standoff. Yeah. 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 I think it's just gonna reflect the political climate for the next few years. Yeah. Right. And there's probably going to be, like, seasonal masks, like mm -hmm. what yeah, Fauci said a few months ago. Because mm -hmm. um, you see the stark divide between blue and red states, mm -hmm. where Florida and Texas are red states and they have, like, no restrictions. And then uh, New York and California have very high restrictions. Mm -hmm. I think um, students in Florida, though, because I have a nieces and nephew there, they do mm -hmm. have to wear their masks. In the... State schools? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. But, yeah, I just, I think it'll just reflect the political climate at the time. Because yeah. it's yeah. been very uh, so. divided over the past few years, right. and the pandemic was definitely used as a political tool. Yeah, and I think that definitely drags things out in a certain way, too. Because, you know, you see people that are against the masks and the people who are yeah. for the masks and they're like well I'm um, un un yeah. un unless you're like <laughs> unless you're yeah. unless you're like Donald Trump and you say oh the pandemic is a hoax we're not we'll, like do it we'll um like wear like bleach put chug bleach down your damn throat yeah <laughs> or whatever or whatever chug whatever he suggested down your throat that that's not actually what he said, but anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> that, I, but that but that was how it was twisted. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, you know, you know what I mean. No, I, well, we know exactly yeah. what you mean. The yeah, I mean, there, some people think it's it a, you know, some people think it's a it's a conspiracy, and um, yeah, the, you yeah. know, in some ways, it's like you know, some people are like, well, that, you know, that's absurd. But if you're someone who likes conspiracy theories, or you look at it, it's like, <laughs> okay, I guess I could see, uh, yeah. you know, I, but you know, it's like now, I mean, it's been several weeks if not m several months since i've actually known someone who's contracted it yeah. um yeah, and it's and it's pretty you know few and far between so again you know, the question comes down to when do we when are we going to stop wearing masks when can we get back inside when are we not restricted on uh you know the number of people and when put a date on it go ahead well, let's let's a do date, a pool yeah. here oh january um 8th. january 8th 2025 2025. Okay, that's <laughs> I think it's probably going to happen in the summer, if anything. This coming summer. People are going to be 
I think still worried about it in the winter because with winter, you know, you see a spike in colds and the flu and strep throat, things like that. So people are going to be worried because of that, I think. Mm -hmm. But maybe, yeah, in the warmer months when colds are less common. When's the next uh, potential time. presidential <laughs> inauguration? So that'd be January 2025. <laughs> <laughs> <Probably>. Hey, <laughs> Haley, you're pretty close. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, possibly January 12th, 2025. There we go. I, I, um, probably like the spring or summer. The spring or summer. Yeah. The, um, like, I don't want to put, I don't want to put like a hard date on it. Um, cause I want to be as, cause I don't want to. We'll just put one because we could look back at this recording and be like, wow, Charlotte was right. <laughs> oh, um, probably. Uh, I don't know. I probably probably like the end of probably like the end of the of. I'm sorry, Charlotte. <laughs> 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 um, probably probably um when the sem when the spring semester ends, like May, June, like like yep. sem spring. Yeah, yeah. spring. There you go. Well, there's a big difference between um, when you think it will end and when do you want it to end, which is today. Yes. Uh, but yeah. yeah, that's not going to happen. So, <laughs> yeah. um, well, I want to thank everybody for coming on with us. Hopefully, we'll see you again next week, and we'll have, have another topic for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has been the Moosecast for uh, October fifteenth, two thousand twenty-one. We are still in the pandemic, but we are still making things happen here on campus. So, I want to thank everybody for coming out, and uh, be well. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Did you say thank you? Thank you. <laughs>